In the middle of the Pacific Ocean, in the small and uninhabited Palmyra Atoll, coral reefs have been used as a time machine. Thanks to several samples taken from the reefs, the climatologist Kim Cobb reconstructed variations in water temperature over the previous thousand years. These peaks in temperature are linked to the natural climate phenomenon, El Niño. Every two to seven years, El Niño turns the region's climate on its head. And it's been happening for hundreds of thousands of years. But with global warming, El Niño's arrival is even more worrying. It is bien possible that these phenomena climatic become more plus and more violent au fil du temps, tout simplement parce que les hommes abîment de plus en plus l'atmosphère. Could the warmer climate caused by greenhouse gas emissions be influencing El Niño? Could El Niño accelerate climate change? In the Pacific, the world's largest ocean, there are three different phases. El Niño, La Niña, and a neutral phase. They alternate and cause weather conditions in the Pacific to change dramatically. Take a look at the neutral phase. To the east, the water is cold. And to the west, the water is warm. This difference generates winds that blow from east to west which are known as trade winds. In this warmer zone, more water evaporates. There are more clouds, meaning there is more rain. Air flowing eastwards creates a dry climate along the Peruvian coast. The trade winds continue to blow, maintaining the upwelling of cold water over this area. This is known as the Walker circulation. Every two to seven years, El Niño disrupts all of this. La nature a inventé El Niño pour se débarrasser d'un coup de cet excès de chaleur stocké dans l'océan, dans les tropiques. Is El Niño weakening trade winds? Is it affecting the water, which is less cold? It's difficult to say. What is known is that a mass of warm water is forming in the central and even eastern Pacific. Rainfall is no longer occurring over the Indo-Pacific warm pool, but further east. The third phase of the cycle is La Niña. During this phase, it's the opposite pattern. Trade winds intensify. The upwelling of cold water on the eastern edge of the Pacific increases, and warmer than normal waters can be observed to the west. The alternation between these phases is decisive because it shapes the climate throughout this part of the globe. In Peru, for example, El Niño has at least two kinds of consequences. Anchovies flee warm waters, which could spell the end of the fishing season for Peru. Peruvian anchovies account for 20% of the world's fish meal consumption for animal feed. And it has another consequence. The drastic increase in precipitation on land used to drought can generate floods and catastrophic landslides, like in 1982, 1998 and 2016. Elsewhere in this area, Polynesia has to prepare for possible cyclones because of the evaporation of warmer water. New Caledonia and Australia, meanwhile, are experiencing droughts. The effects of El Niño can extend far beyond the Pacific. By disrupting the Walker circulation, El Niño has a domino effect on neighbouring circulations. This can modify major atmospheric air currents and affect the climate in other parts of the world, like in the US or even Africa. These are the possible consequences of an El Niño phase, but they are not necessarily inevitable. Every El Niño is different. Wind variations, the extent of temperature changes and the state of the climate on the planet can result in varied consequences. This is why the phenomenon is not so easy to study. When you have a climate phenomenon with a history of being weird in the past, it makes it much more difficult to tell why it's being weird right now. 
Is it just being weird because it's weird sometimes? Or is it being weird because climate change is putting its thumb on Enso? It is not clear if climate change exacerbates El Nino. But could El Nino instead be accelerating climate change because of its warming effect on the Pacific? The Pacific Tropical occupes one quart of the surface of the planet, it's gigantic. And so, arithmetically, when we augmente the temperature in this region, the temperature moyenne augmente, but that doesn't mean that the temperature in each other point will augmenter. Locally, climate change can accentuate the consequences of El Nino. If you're in an area that tends to see more precipitation during El Nino, climate change and its warmer atmosphere means that the atmosphere can hold more moisture. You might see more precipitation than you expect to see. Some environments already weakened by warmer waters, such as coral reefs, could reach the point of no return even more quickly. Climate change means coral reefs won't be able to recover from El Nino during colder periods. In the early 2020s, a La Nina episode, which was supposed to be cold, was actually much warmer than an El Nino event considered extreme in 1982. Let's return to the coral reefs from the beginning. They might be able to uncover information about the influence of climate change on the frequency and intensity of El Nino. On a des, des comportements extrêmes, notamment au cours des, des dernières décennies. On a eu quelques événements El Nino particulièrement chauds. On ne peut pas vraiment, avec grande confiance, attribuer ces événements au réchauffement global. For Miriam Caudry, who works on coupled ocean atmosphere models, we still lack the clarity to draw any conclusions, because these different samples only offer some insight. To fully understand how these phases evolve, we need to be able to study the climate of the last two millennia on a continuous basis before humanity's influence on the climate. Maintenant, on a des méthodes statistiques et puis des méthodes, des approches qui nous permettent de faire converger ces données issues d'archives naturelles avec les modèles climatiques complexes pour produire des réanalyses ou des reconstructions physiquement cohérentes du climat sur plusieurs siècles, voire millénaires. It won't be long until researchers will be able to tell why the climate change is indeed influencing El Nino. What is certain is that the effects of El Nino, such as floods and droughts, are growing with the effects of climate change. These climate hazards can destroy already fragile environments, like coral reefs, some of which may soon see their last El Nino.